Southern Garage Time, we are adding a cargo carrier to our 1979 Westphalia. To do this, we had to buy our fake rain gutters, and we're going with the Thule uh, rack system. Here's one of our adapters with the fake rain gutter on it. Bars are already placed. We've got the rack up there deciding where we want it, but we're going to go ahead and get these installed now, and we will show you how we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so looking at the side of the bus here, I've put some tape. We've just set the cargo box up here to make sure that it aligns. We've got the back rack up so that the bikes don't hit it when it's up. I'm trying to place it as far back as I can because obviously I have to lift up the pop top. If the weight's at the back, it'll be easier to lift. So like the positioning it's in, it works with our cargo box. So we've taped it, gonna mount these. Uh, higher than lower. There's some wood support in the roof here as well. So it'll give it a bit more strength. So before we go ahead and mark this and drill it, we're just gonna take off the rack and check that there's no uh, bracket or whatnot interfering with the place we wanna drill our holes. Last thing I wanna do, drill my holes, find out that the rack is on the other side or the mechanism, the lifting mechanism is on the other side and I can't access it to put the nuts on or that they would interfere with that, that would be upsetting. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So like they say, measure twice, cut once. We went underneath after we popped it up and checked. We did want the bracket to be here and here. We're using the roof grooves as our guide and it's giving us the distance we needed for our rack. So based on our cargo box, the maximum we could do was 36. The minimum we could do is 22. And the center to center of two grooves is 28. So it works out pretty perfect for our cargo box. Maybe different in your case. But when we popped it up, the roof mechanism, you can see the three bolts in the roof here. It does cover this whole area. So Putting our first bracket here would interfere underneath, causing problems, so we've moved it up one groove. Um, it's still going to have our box relatively center in the roof. It does have a bit of movement to slide back. We're going to slide it a bit further back, but we've moved up to this groove. So I did go ahead and mark the first one out already, but center line in our groove, we drew. I measured up an inch using my square. So I ran up an inch, drew a perfectly straight line. Now on our fake rain gutter, I marked center line with a piece of tape, flipped it upside down so I could easily mark the points. You can see the profile of it. If you're trying to do this, it's gonna be hard to line up with your line. I wanted a nice straight edge, so this is how I went about it, marked it like that. If I flip it over, I can see when I mark, line up on my holes perfectly that I have a little bit of space here because you can't have that tight down here because it's gonna, the roof rack is gonna clamp onto this. So you, you do need a little bit of space underneath for your arm to go under. So we're gonna achieve that with our inch Okay, so we're gonna put a small divot with our scribe. Now it is fiberglass, so I'm not gonna to go too crazy. Okay, those are marked. Now, obviously I have a nice top. I'm gonna to put a piece of wood behind. Here we go. No turning back now. We get our drill, get our block of wood, and we will make some holes.
get both holes drilled and after further inspection i misspoke so the wood is actually just above that i'm actually just through fiberglass here as well part of the reason i went up there was hoping to go through the wood i am not going through the wood but if i put these down lower they wouldn't work i don't really have a choice in placement obviously up higher it becomes really hard with your canvas and down lower than this binds so there really isn't much choice other than exactly where i ended up placing those so i put it as close as i can to this lip when i clamp it on okay so we'll go ahead and drill the other side now all right so the false rain gutter kit from Thule came with fairly long bolts and just regular nuts but we decided to buy the acorn style uh, just in case anything does wipe on this which it will because this is going to compress as you put it down you'll have lots of extra materials so we'll go ahead put the acorn behind okay so we got the acorn tightened on the back if I measure how far I'm sticking out here, I know you can't see from your angle, but I'm about five eighths out. So I will take this off. Take that off, measure my bolt. So Thread-wise, um, I'm about an inch and a half, so take off five eighths, and that will be the length of the bolt we need. All right, so we'll go get some new hardware and get all these mounted up. Okay, so unfortunately, we went to the hardware store, or our local nut and bolt store, and this is a metric fastener. I had already bought the acorns for it and they don't have any carriage bolts in metric that met our requirements. Yes, we live in Canada. Yes, it's hard to find metric hardware here. Most of our stuff's imperial. So we have decided the best bet is to cut these. So using the vise, setting the length that we need. So I already measured the length that we need. We have our template and we're going to go ahead and cut all eight pieces of hardware and just reuse the same one. So cutting it, if you haven't done it before, obviously it's best if you have a nut that you put on so that when you thread it off, if you did anything funky to your thread. So there, there's my sizing one. I've got it to size. in the vise and use my hacksaw. So then I usually tighten it on a wee bit more, turn it up, get my file, and just kind of make sure I don't have any really sharp edges, turn it back, and loosen this guy off. So as I'm loosening it off, if I damage the end thread there, it should re-thread itself. Okay. And repeat times eight. Okay, so we're starting to put on our uh, false 
uh, gutters. So my nuts would actually just be touching the wood. So I have to take my drill and actually just do a little bit of a notch on the inside so that my nut will fit in behind. So I'm going to do that. So not a huge notch, just enough that your acorn nut can fit apart. So that looked good there now. So I'm going to add a little bit of silicone seal just around the hole itself. Now it will squish around under the rubber when I tighten it down. Give me a good seal. Now I know even if water did run in there, it would run into this gutter and go down, but let's keep water out of there. Okay, so we already got our rubber on. Two of our pre-cut bolts through. Okay, so push that in. So we're going to have to cut those, they're nice and tight. So there you go, we've put on our bars, we've made all the distances on each side equal, we've tightened it down. All we have left to do is put on our plastic little end caps and and put the carrier cargo box on top and we're good to go. So all in all, it was a much harder than anticipated task. The wood being right here with the brackets that came with the tool kit made it a little bit more challenging and definitely took more time than expected. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get the other caps installed. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you out there.